everyone, it's you Beth from Finlight Tarot. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to have a look at the decks I turn to whenever I feel a little bit overwhelmed, whether it's by, you know, life, <laughs> as it so happens, or, you know, even by my practice itself, because um, there's a few things that um, are happening in the tarot community uh, lately and uh, there's a couple of um, persons that have come up and said that they feel uh, it's, it's slightly more than tarot overwhelm, it's, it's tarot burnout for example. Don Michelle has just recently posted a video saying that she's um, she needs a bit of time off. Um, burnout is something very serious. Uh, it's something that we all need to acknowledge and it's something that we all need to be aware of because whether it's about tarot or your career or, well, pretty much everything, um, it triggers some kind of mental discomfort that it's very, very important that we do not underestimate. Um, I am a strong believer, as you know, I'm an advocate for human rights when it comes to mental health care. I have been fighting even institutions sometimes um, in order to provide better health care, provide better structures, provide um, even when it comes to just checking out on people. Um, it doesn't take much, does it? I mean, just send a message hi, how are you doing, etc. I know that there's a lot of campaigns around to uh, just try and create awareness in the community when it comes to uh, perhaps someone, you know, going th through something difficult, uh, perhaps an elderly person that is on their own. Um, just you know, checking in, uh, whether it's by message, phone call, even visit, you know, if you're in the area, etc. It really helps. I know that it doesn't sound that much, but I have been doing a lot of studies on suicide prevention. And uh, even when there is no extreme um, to, you know, when there are no circumstances to make you think that this person may actually be thinking about something that extreme. Uh, checking in, as I said, doesn't cost anything. Uh, it's an act of kindness and you wouldn't believe the impact it actually has on somebody's well-being. So I know that there's a lot of campaigns uh, to do that. For example, the Are You OK Day. But I can assure you that when someone is going through something, uh, they don't have time to wait for the uh, Are You OK Day. Um, so I highly, you know, I, I always ask everyone to uh, even be silly about it. If you're worried that you're going to look silly, then so be it. Look silly, you know, just checking in with someone. I can assure you 100% you will not be uh, turned away. People actually do appreciate that and they will they will let you know and sometimes just asking if they feel okay means a lot as I said. You will never uh, you know, you, you will never feel like you regret reaching out to others. I, I, I can guarantee that 100%. Anyway, this is my small <laughs> contribution to that when uh, there is, uh, you know, something that is overwhelming. And I'm not saying that this is the cure to burnout. Absolutely not, because it's even more tarot. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to say that I'm, I'm here and, uh, you know, I keep on doing this. And I keep on doing this because I strongly believe in creating meaningful connections. So I'm not here to just show you my decks. Um, I've got 400 and I counted them yesterday, but I, I, I think that one is coming in, two are, are going out, but I got around 462 decks overall, um, including all of the different systems. Um, so if, you know, if I just wanted to make a video out of my collection, probably in, let's say, 20 videos, I reckon, 20, 25 videos, I'll be done. Um, and I'm making videos, I am i don't even know how many videos I'm making, but <laughs> it's probably over a hundred. Um, and, and so this is something different for me. This is because I, I want to show 
you know, someone who's watching my videos that there is a lot more to just looking at the cards. There is a possibility to actually have a connection and it can be a meaningful connection. And I can assure you 1000%. That is something that I always tell everyone that is processing grief especially grief for the loss of someone, creating meaningful connections is the best way to actually feel better. Because, and I stress the point, meaningful connections, not just you know connections, you can just um, throw a pebble <laughs> out there in the crowd and you, you make a connection because you're gonna hit someone and they're going to ask who did that, etc. I mean meaningful connection. So, that's what I'm here for, not for the decks. I know that obviously there is a strong demand to see new decks, to see older decks, to see out of print decks, rare, hard to find, what have you. Um, but to me that is just a really beautiful and artistic way to reach out to people and to tell them that I'm here. I, I also have a membership program that is, bas is basically um, going on these kind of things. It's, it's all about, you know, connections, connecting with others and being aware of what others are going through and just being there for them. So it's, it's really not, um, you know, I, I believe it's something that we all need to be participating on. It's something that we have no excuse not to do. Unless we ourselves are going through something really tough, then in that, that obviously that's different. If you don't have the right energy, you cannot give out energy. But I'm okay so far. <laughs> We're all going through something, but I'm okay. And I feel like I can give some of my energies out to others. So having said that, we're going to have a look today at those decks that I actually use whenever I feel like I don't need a slap in the face. And, but I really like to have a look at my decks, play with them, even read with them, either for clients or for myself, generally more for myself. So let's start. The first one I really want to talk about is this one, and unfortunately I don't have the box because it came from uh, Make Playing Cards and um, the box that I got from them did not have enough room for and, and, and as you can notice I'm actually struggling to take it out of the bag as well. Anyway, so the box that came from Make Playing Cards is the white standard tap box. Did not have enough room for the, uh, let's say, explanation cards. Um, so it's the Maralun, uh, by the way, Tarot, you probably recognize it already. And it came with these cards that, you know, it, they have a couple of uh, keywords for each and every card, which is really good, of course, uh, very helpful, I would say. Uh, if you're a, a beginner, these are like cheat sheets, you know, it's something that you keep on going back and forth because it's actually very helpful. However, I, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily, I, I, I had a look at them and then I, I never use them again. Uh, they are very basic um, uh, keywords, even though they do come with the reverse meaning as well, which is always handy. Um, but I don't want to store them away from the deck because I know myself and I'll end up losing it, losing these. So I want to store them together. And as I said, that tap, tap box just didn't, it wasn't you know, wide enough or large enough. So I am storing them in the uh, bag, as you have seen. And this deck is really kind. It's my Zen, you know, one of my Zen kind of decks. It's watercolor combined with, um, I think, pencil colors. Uh, but it's really beautiful, very soft color palette. And um, even though it is an RWS clone, as you can see quite easily, it's one of those decks that actually has a little bit of a modern take on it, but still, it still gives you the idea of being set in a world apart. And I believe that that's one of the main reasons why this deck is not a slap in the face, because it's set in a world that is not necessarily recognizable, uh, you know, firsthand. Um, that's... My Temporal card and the Chariot card of these deck are probably two of my favorites, especially the Chariot card, because let me just go on a tangent here, because I know that there's a lot of uh, fiction uh, fans and fantasy uh, fiction fans. So this reminds me so much of um, 
Serafino Pecala uh, from uh, his Dark Material. So if you don't know that, she is the Queen of the Witches. Um, and um, in his Dark Materials trilogy, it is believed that uh, humans that live in that particular world, because spoiler alert, please skip ahead <laughs> if you haven't read those books, although I really do believe that it's impossible you haven't because they are absolutely fantastic. So um, humans that live in that in Lyra's world, they have a demon, what they call a demon. However, a demon is a positive entity and it's actually part of the person and it's a, uh, let's say, a, uh, a live so it's it's almost as if if our soul were alive and apart from us detached from us and it would take the shape of an animal what animal would that be in a way and uh witches have um you know um birds as demons so as, let's say soul companions and this is a fantastic, you know, it's just a really beautiful tarot card. So it's set in a world that it, you just, it's not necessarily recognizable, you know, immediately. And so what happens is that you do kind of um, leave at the door whenever you enter this deck, you leave at the door that feeling that you need to um, bring your luggage with you. And with luggage, I mean all of your bias, precognitive bias that, you know, that you would develop in life because that's, you know, it's impossible not to. Uh, this is not, let's say, uh, my hometown. Um, this is a place that doesn't have a name for me. So I am already prone to believe um, that I, I want to discover what's in there, what the characters look like, what their, you know, what their issues, what the events in life, um, in life are, and how they face them. And then I look at these characters and obviously I am open to understand what their message is and what they're trying to tell me. And it just so happens to be obviously the message that come out of the cards, as in the RWS, but it still feels like there is so much, uh, so many beautiful things, uh, you know, that we are, we need to be open to. Now, I don't know why these two are reversed. Why are you reversed? I understand the Three of Swords being reversed and the Devil, well, I don't know. <laughs> But anyway, so the Ten of Swords, for example, you can see the doves. Uh, I believe there are doves, but there are white birds. It could be something else. Um, I really like that because it tells you a dove, in a way, it's a symbol of peace, but it's also, to me, it's a symbol of rebirth. And so there is this sense of hitting rock bottom, but then actually, you know, leaping uh, upwards towards something that feels like peaceful and liberating. And the, um, you know, the Ouroboros just biting its own tail and closing everything. This is a card that in many, many cases would signify the world. But in this case, it's the death card because it does point to the cycle of death and rebirth, um, which is really beautiful, I believe. And even the Three of Swords, I mean, uh, the majority of um, RWS clones is actually a pierced heart. In this case, it's actually a flower. I think it's a rose. I'm not an expert. I let my husband do all the botanical stuff. That's his field, not mine. Uh, but I, it's probably not even a rose. Anyway, it's a flower. And, uh, you know, and these three swords, but it looks almost as if they were part of an emblem more than, you know, hitting the flower, more than killing the flower more than you know spilling blood for example because in this case we we can see that the flower is still intact and it looks almost as if it were also quite you know ripe in 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 blossoming etc so there's something to be said about the kindness of the cards the kindness that is expressed in the cards even when you know some of the cards are not necessarily uh, kind in their meaning. So this is definitely one of my Zen um, uh, decks because as I said, it really gives you that idea of peace. Another one that uh, gives me, so another one of my Zen decks. So it also gives me a sense of peace, but it's in a different way. And it's the Star Child Tarot by Danielle Noel. And this is actually the Akashic uh, size, let's say version. Um, I really love this deck. 
it's not one of those gentle, kind, cozy, hugsy kind of decks. Um, it is actually very powerful, but the reason why this is a Zen deck for me is because it is very conducive of meditation. And if you never use this deck, you will be... You, I, I think you will feel it straight away because it does have that kind of cosmic energy, celestial energy, very abstract. Even though by itself, it's not necessarily abstract. We do have uh, humans uh, depicted in the cards, as you can see. Although they are stylized in such a way that they don't necessarily look like they're archetypes of human beings. They just represent ideas. To me, these uh, people populating the cards definitely represent ideas and not necessarily um, our neighbors, ourselves, our clients, etc. So even the Ten of Cups, and for example, we can definitely see it. Okay, there's three people here. Of course, I can see them, but they are because they are so stylized. Um, they do represent the community, and in some cases, you know, we see even someone from uh, from the back. Obviously, because this is the Two of Swords, and uh, you know, it needs to communicate that sense of. Uh, not seeing things clearly, so we, we don't even see where the person is looking. She could, she, he, they, 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 they could be completely blindfolded, although it doesn't look like it. But in any case, we don't speculate. This deck doesn't let you speculate, whereas busier, more modern, and let's say almost, uh, even let's say when we talk about graphic novel style decks, they let you speculate a lot because perhaps they're based on a theme. I'm thinking about the Stranger Things deck, for example. Obviously, it reminds you a lot of the scenes of the um, TV show. Whether you like it or not, um, there is a lot of luggage that comes with recognizing someone or something in a card. And obviously it can be something beautiful, but it can also be something that is a little bit concerning. It can be something that throws you off. When a deck instead is so very celestial, as I said, cosmic, and the energy that you feel coming out of these cards, um, it's absolutely like that. So it's something that is definitely conducive of meditation because it is necessarily set in a realm that is above ours. So it, also, it almost makes you feel like you can, for the time being, take a break, you know, just <laughs> pamper yourself for the time being and just look at these cards and imagine uh, and listen to what you're feeling and listen to what you're thinking and just have a beautiful time with these cards. So this is the Star Child Tarot Akashic side. And another deck that I really like to use in a moment in which I feel a bit disoriented, confused, I feel not 100%. Not in Australia, we always say, how do you feel when someone is not okay? They say, I'm not 100%. I don't know whether it's a uh, saying that you recognize from other parts of the world, uh, but I can assure you that when someone actually says to you that they're not 100%, you can rest assured that they're actually sick. So there is a bit of a way to um, be underwhelming whenever you communicate something because there is this kind of sense of being a bit, you know, she'll be right, yeah, you'll be right, but it, which is very typical um, of Australia. But I have to say that uh, Australia has done a lot of progress when it comes to mental health and awareness. There is a lot of associations that actually take care of these kind of things and really do provide a structure for anyone to just reach out and ask for help. Uh, and I'm talking about some associations like the uh, uh, Beyond Blue, the um, Black Dog, uh, the Lifeline, and there's others as well. I really praise you know these uh, the guys behind these associations and the volunteers that work for these associations because it is very tough, very tough to, um, you know, sometimes you answer the phone in a customer service and uh, on the other side of the line you have someone who, who uh, is really overwhelmed. And so you need to be prepared, there's, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of training involved and it's something that doesn't pay that much, even those that do that for a living, I can assure you they don't make millions. 
So it is because they're actually really, really, they, they find that to be their vocation, their calling. So it's very admirable. Um, especially because, ironically, on the side of, uh, on the other side of the spectrum, we have GPs or you know doctors that have absolutely no training at all, and uh, they're actually very, very scared um, to uh, face someone, to treat someone with mental health discomfort and they tend to push people away. I've seen that many, many times, unfortunately. So even more so, you know, we need to praise uh, the, the ones that are working for these associations. So another deck that I use um, when I feel like I need to reach that state of peace of mind is the Gold Liar Tarot. It, this deck is so gorgeous. It's really a beautiful um, deck. It's one of those decks that has uh, an excellent use of presence and absence. And let me explain what I mean with that. So you probably know this deck. There's also the indie version. I've seen it around and I think it's pretty similar. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I seem to remember that there's the same way of using, let's say, the, the titles of a, as a really wide band of white space. And then there's a lot of um, absence and presence. So this game of absence and presence in the economy of the real estate of the card, you know, you see images, they're photographic collages, actually well made, I would say, because I don't see any overlapping, you know, sometimes it happens. Um, so they're, they're uh, photographic collages. And uh, even though in many cases you will see collage decks having the whole page, let's call it page of the card being filled up with, you know, other elements or symbols or images. In this case, what they decided to do is to stick to a minimum or a small number of symbols or photos and, you know, and make the rest very symbolic of that sense of background. So background, especially if you're familiar with uh, photographic techniques, background is extremely important. And I, I mean extremely important. You can change um, the entire mood of a photo shoot by changing the background. The background has a different way of reflecting and absorbing light. It's extremely important because it's, even though it's something that seems like in this case it's an absence, so we don't have anything present in these backgrounds, it really speaks louder than the presence of something because it, it really brings the eye uh, it, it prevents the eye from wandering, it brings the eye to the center of the image where there is something. And so it acts, it acts as a sort of a contrasting element that is very, very powerful. And this deck, because of that, is very calming. I find that it's a very calming deck, it's a very soothing kind of deck. And it's one of those decks that you want to use when you need this, when you need to, um, you know, that kind of soothing energy around you because you are a bit uh, overwhelmed, you, you're not 100% as we say here. And uh, it works wonders. It's uh, apart from the fact that it's actually really gorgeous. I mean, ob objectively, it's an incredibly beautiful deck, but I, I have um, other decks that are even more stunning but they're actually really dark and they're definitely not chilling and they're definitely not, um, let's say, favoring that kind of uh, relaxed environment that perhaps you're seeking. So this one has that kind of energy, as we said, and it's a really, really beautiful deck. And it's also very easy to read, I must say, because, well, the title are massive, as you can see, so there's no, there's no confusing, you know, and there's no looking around for the title on the card because you can see it immediately. It's probably the first thing that you actually see on the cards. And yet they're not disturbing. So this is another really beautiful deck that to me is a Zen deck and it's the Gold Lyra. So another deck that has the same kind of vibe is the White Sage Tarot, definitely one of my Zen decks. This is in a tin, I've been looking for forever for the Indie edition because the Indie edition was actually normal standard um, tarot size. And, um, but then again, what happened was that once I actually saw it and I was very disappointed because it still has a really wide 
uh, white band like this one as a title. And the images end up being only slightly bigger, but not that much bigger. And the reason why I wanted a bigger deck is because I actually want to have bigger images. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But this is definitely a calming and soothing kind of deck, still using watercolor. I have to say, in defense of watercolor, um, even though I cannot draw, I'm not the artistic type, unfortunately, because that is one of my biggest regrets, not spending a little bit more time trying to uh, learn how to paint, for example, even calligraphy, I would love to, even if it were just calligraphy, I would love to learn that because I do love fountain pens and fountain pen inks and I would love to be able to write the name of the ink. When I'm swatching inks, I would love to be able to write the name in calligraphy. I cannot. <laughs> so that's a big regret that I have. But let me say something in defense to um, watercolor and in defense to in defense of watercolor in combination with, because in many cases you will see these two media together. So watercolor and pencil, um, um, pencil, a color pencil, etc. Um, they actually complement each, each other. I do believe that the watercolor has that kind of possibility to fill in the spaces that you cannot necessarily do with the pencil because the pencil has a more important presence, let's say, whereas a watercolor also gives you the possibility to just take a vision of the whole rather to have to fix or fixate onto the details. I hope it makes sense. But in any case, this is a very peaceful... Look at this task card, how beautiful is that? Of course, it's the light at the end of the tunnel, again, talking about the cycle of death and rebirth and, you know, transformation and moving on to a different realm, perhaps a different sphere, uh, a different body, if you believe in reincarnation, for example. And it's that kind of things that I actually notice in a deck when um, there's a confrontational card and you look at it and you don't feel uh, conflicted you feel accepting. Um, let's see if I, uh, there you go. There's a five of swords. Obviously it's a pipish deck. So um, of course, were it not, it would be probably more busy. It would be probably a bit more conflictual and a bit more confronting. Fair enough. I understand that. However, I do believe that in here, in the five of swords, you can still feel, you know, you have the feel for the meaning of the card. But on the other hand, you also have that kind of gentle um, intonation, gentle tone of the card. So obviously we're talking about gaslighting, we're talking about, you know, the, the speaking behind someone's back and creating a situation in which there's a lot of misunderstanding that actually go to the extreme. So there's treason, you know, there's something that can end up really bad. Um, and you can see that from, you know, the opposition of four swords against one is the unfair advantage. How is one sword supposed to defend itself from uh, the attack of four, you know, four uh, other swords? And yet there is that sense of still kindness because you don't see any blood, you don't see... Um, there, there are also no visual expressions, for example, that would definitely uh, make this card more confrontational. So it is a choice, of course, it's a choice. It's something that the author um, had to you know, consider and then they just decided to go one way rather than another and it's absolutely fine. I love the fact that, for example, you see the colors of the, of the ribbons. So there are ribbons pretty much in every card, apart from the majors. And uh, the ribbons of the cards correspond to the colors of the chakras. So there's also that kind of association, which is rather interesting. If you are interested, you know, in chakras and working with chakras, that is definitely one of the decks that could bridge the two disciplines of studying the chakras and studying the tarot. And I absolutely love this fool. It's such a really cute puppy. So I know it's um, it's a very well-known deck, so I'm not going to spend more time on this, but this is definitely, the White Sage Tower is definitely one of my Zen decks. And the next one is definitely one of my hug decks. Uh, because I believe that Zen is, well, to me, Zen is neutral. Zen needs to be neither bad, let's say, neither confrontational, but also not necessarily uh, something that is supporting. Zen is when there is a... Um, 
the Buddhist concept of Zen is when there is lack of emotions. It's impossible for us humans. It takes years and years and probably decades of training, you know, to get to the stage in which you don't have emotions. Being free from emotions, being free from desire, mostly this, being free from desire, I would say, is the key training of the Buddhist discipline and philosophy. Uh, because desire, unfortunately, brings confrontation, it brings conflict, it, it, you know, it makes people actually do immoral things. Um, so for being free from desire is definitely the way to achieve nirvana. But I personally, I'm, I don't know whether, culturally speaking, I would ever be able to um, meditate so well and in such a, a you know, a strong way to achieve enlightenment because to me it's something that um, you know human beings around me um, bear so much importance in my life that I will never be completely free of desire because even the the one desire that I have is for everyone to be well and being free of desire is also wishing not not wishing for that you understand what I mean? So I actually believe that Zen can include also some supportive decks, and this is definitely one of them. It's the Emperor Nora Tarot Awakening Edition. I also have the uh, original edition, which has more, let's say, warmer kind of tones. This is actually a deck that I had to trim because I wanted to use it so much and um, even trimmed of the, let's say, the outer side of the borders, um, made it too big for my hands. So I had to trim it. I don't, I actually like it trimmed this way. I don't regret trimming it, even though this deck is out of print. It now sells for like three, four hundred dollars because unfortunately it's very hard to find, especially the Awakening Edition, the original edition. You can probably still find a few copies for like under under twenty dollars. This is a deck that um, has come to me at a very specific time when I really needed it without knowing that I needed this deck in specific. I have always been collecting tarot um, and this has happened many, many times. But I have to say that this, the times in which it has happened with other decks, you know, they came to me when I needed them and then they did their job. And then, not that they left my collection because I still use them, but they were not as, uh, let's say, used by me as they were when they entered my collection at first. This one backs the trend. I keep on using this deck. I actually use it a lot for readings now. Whenever I do readings for uh, someone who's going through something tough, I always use this deck. I explain the concept behind this deck. Um, I also, generally speaking, show this person the deck before just to know whether they feel like it resonates for them or not. And generally speaking, it's one of those decks that it is it's ironically it's more supportive but less let's say less of a, a soft deck because the fire sword does show you for example a heart that is actually it's got a, a an eye at the center and this eye um, is crying because there's a tear here so obviously this is the concept is more confrontational however the way in which we see this image is less confrontational. I don't know if that makes sense, but it is a matter of feelings. Uh, what's your gut feeling about this card? So in my case, I can feel, I know I understand where it comes from. I definitely can see the essence of the card and the meaning, but it doesn't feel as confrontational as any other deck with this particular image would feel. So I believe that it's a combination of the color palette, the uh, way in which the image, the art style, let's say, the way in which the image, images are being conceived and replicated. And it's the general tone of the deck itself. The moon card is really beautiful with this moon that is 
almost as if it were a portal because you actually see the other person um, being a, uh, I believe, almost as if it were a projection of the self. Because this person is more characterized as a human being, you can tell because there is a choice of the color of the air, for example, it's slightly wavy air, and it's also down to her almost her waist. So you, you definitely see the, the choices to characterize this person as a person. However, on the other side of this mirror slash portal, you can see another per humanoid kind of a figure that actually doesn't have any characteristics. So what I believe is that it's some kind of a projection of the self onto the moon that serves as some kind of either portal or mirror. And that's, that to me points to the uh, intuition, you know, the uh, definitely the third eye and going back into oneself to find our core uh, values, our core beliefs, but also, you know, taking a step back from um, the crowded societies that surround us. So it's a really beautiful way to uh, depict the moon. So this is the Amber and Aura Tarot and this is the Awakening Edition. And that's another deck that I always feel like using when I need a moment to just understand to let go uh, and be okay with letting go. And that's the Gentle Tarot and I, from Mar Mar by Mary in the Sky. I love this deck so much that um, it's, um, it's one of the decks that I use the most. Uh, but it's also one of the decks that have a really specific purpose. So it's not one of the decks that I would use for general divination. As a matter of fact, I do use it, but uh, only when I feel in a certain way. But this is one of the decks that I use a lot when it comes to journaling, when it comes to, uh, you know, that kind of work in your uh, practice for personal growth. And uh, it's ironically, the color palette is rather strong. You have the use of blacks, for example, there is browns, you know, there's um, even the images themselves. I mean, we have a whole suit, which is called the suit of Tanda, which is actually a renaming of the suit of swords. So as you can imagine, it's not necessarily one of those decks that, you know, it really eases you into something and uh, uh, prevent, you know, it, it, it doesn't slap you in the face. It does not slap you in the face. It's not one of. It's not a Barbara Walker Tarot <laughs> kind of deck. It still tells you the truth. It doesn't slap you with it, but it still communicates something, even when that something is rather difficult to accept. However, it does have a kind of feeling of being positive, of being gentle, of being kind, of being. Um, also soothing and the kind of deck that, you know, it's definitely a Zen deck, it's definitely a kind deck. This is the Nine of Thunder. So what I really love about this card is that even though it still communicates that sense of anguish, so the Nine of Thunder, as we said, is the Nine of Swords, while on the one hand it still communicates a sense of anguish because the person is um, you know, they're wearing this coat or whatever this is of darkness, right? And the thunders are actually on the coat. So you can really feel that those worry are dragging this person down. So you can definitely feel the discomfort in this car, the anxiety of waking up at 2 a.m., worried about something, and everything looks so much worse when you wake up at 2 a.m. because you're on your own. And because there is no light and because um, even if you have a partner and they're right there sleeping next to you, they're sleeping. And even if they were not, you don't feel like reaching out because you feel like you're on, on your own. You feel like you cannot ask for help and everything. They call it the um, hour of the wolf and there's a lot of uh, legends, myths and, um, you know, a lot of um, even... In Italy, we also have a lullaby. Although I, I'm not sure if you still call it lullaby when it's not whimsical. So, but in any case, it's a, um, it's a song for children when they're um, you know when they're little, and um, it, it talks about darkness and it talks about what are you gonna do when the darkness comes and everything. So there is a kind of a reminder in each and every culture that. There is that time of the night in which we feel like we are, we're not going anywhere. We feel like nothing is going to be okay ever again. 
And uh, this card definitely communicates that, but on the other hand, it also gives you the idea of liberation that is soon to come because this person is actually doing the opposite of what someone would do in the traditional nine of uh, uh, swords which is you know be hiding their face crying into their own hands this person is actually looking up and that is a sign to just be able to look up be able to even in the midst of all of the things going wrong when everything feels like it's falling apart you're still looking up um, it's something that you're doing for yourself because let me tell you there's no one else there forcing your your chin up you have to do it yourself and that's that's a wonderful way to depict that card I believe so this is one of those decks it just brings about that kind of energy that kind of uh, vibe and I really appreciate it for it because I believe that in many cases I have Zen decks where there's let's say this sense of peace uh, even devoid of desire, so it's a very uh, monotone kind of movement, it doesn't have pe peaks and troughs. Um, or I have really supportive decks that they hug you and they show you that everything is okay even when there is, for example, a Nine of Swords. And then I have this deck that it's not hiding the truth and it's telling you a Nine of Swords is the, the card of, you know, that drags you down because you're really worried. But on the other hand, it's also telling you that there is always hope. You just have to remember and remind yourself to look up. How beautiful is that? So this is the Gentle Tarot and it's another one of my Zen decks. And now because I feel like I always talk about tarot decks and I never talk about oracle decks, I do believe that there's a lot of oracle decks in my collection that actually have that kind of Zen feel to them. So one of them absolutely is the Nature Healing Chi Oracle by Denise Robinson, artwork by Jane Curtis. This is by, uh, I believe, Denise and Jane are two fellow Aussies. Um, I think they're they may be based in Melbourne, but I'm not entirely sure. But this deck is available on Etsy. So I think that they actually ship overseas as well. In any case, for all of the decks that I'm showing today and in any other of my videos, when they're not out of print, I will definitely put the uh, link to purchase them or at least to have a look at them in the description box below. If they are out of print, I usually say so uh, in the description box below always. So this deck, again, another watercolor deck but such a beautiful deck. It does remind me a lot of Australia because it does show you a lot of Australian, typical Australian things that are, um, you know, part of uh, Australian nature. And, um, and also in general, let's say. It's a very calm, this is definitely a Zen deck. It's one of those decks that uh, really tells you that everything is, um, if not necessarily okay, you are in a safe environment for now. It's almost as if it were providing you with refuge. Now I have to say that um, an Oracle deck has an easier task, I believe, rather than a, a tarot deck. Because for a tarot deck, when you're a tarot deck creator, you have to follow a certain system. So you, you, even if you don't like the RWS, fair enough, and you follow Thoth, for example, or Marseille, or you perhaps you want to follow your own system, perhaps you want to build a Lenormand deck, or perhaps a Keeper, or uh, your own system, absolutely go for it, fantastic, be creative. We need, <laughs> we need that in our community. However, you always have, in order for your deck to, to be complete, to be balanced, you always need some kind of shadow and light, or, or rather light and shadow, you know what I mean? So in this case, I think that there's only one card, and I think it's this one here. It says storm and disturbed. So what do you think about this card? It's probably the only card in the whole deck, which has 44 cards, by the way where there is a little bit of a um, indication that there might be something afoot, that there might be something not necessarily uh, positive, not necessarily zen, etc. And, and in this way, I actually appreciate that because it still talks about something uh, that we need to accept in life. So not everything is pink um, in life and absolutely, um, that's something that we need to accept, obviously, and a, uh, an oracle deck 
Um, I have to say, if you want your oracle deck, if you make one yourself, you can actually choose to be 100% uh, positive. I don't know how many sales you would have because it is almost part of human nature to actually see that sometimes things are not um, positive. Because we, let's face it, we want to see ourselves. So I, I remember talking with, uh, I used to have a group of writers and uh, we were meeting every couple of weeks and we were talking about giving each other feedbacks on what we were writing. And I remember once saying uh, that what people want to read about is themselves. Whether it's themselves dressed as a pirate, you know, in the Caribbean, uh, living the life, etc. Or whether it's themselves as a king, or whether it's themselves as a vampire, or what have you. It's always something that we need to find recognition. We need to recognize ourselves in the characters we are reading about. And that the reason why we want that, or at least the reason why a book that actually resonates with reader would have an enormous success, whereas a book that doesn't may not necessarily be very popular, is because humans always need to be self-reassured. And so in order to do that, we look outside of ourselves in order to understand if we're the only ones that are going through something and if someone else is, then it probably means that it's normal. So we, we are always comparing ourselves to others. Is, is it okay to, um, you know, to, to live in a certain way? Is it okay to be feeling in a certain way? And if I do feel in a certain way and I see that the protagonist of a book feels exactly the same as me, I actually feel better about it because it means that someone else is going through the same thing. I'm not the only one. I'm not uh, a weirdo. <laughs> We're not alone. So it's... You know, you want to see that reflected in a in a deck, even though it's a an oracle deck. You want to see that sometimes there are clouds and sometimes there are storms. But this is definitely a very zen deck, and it's the Nature Healing Chi Oracle um, by. It's actually sold by the Bay Kinesiology. And last but not least, there's another Oracle deck and it's a very recent release, it's by Rockpool. Everyone has been talking about this deck, it is the Magical Spirit Oracle, The Brilliance of You by Alexis Raccoon. Um, I believe that this Oracle deck um, has become very popular because of the sentences, because of the messages that are actually on the cards. Now, let me explain why I'm saying that. And it's because if you look at the pure aesthetics, this is a deck that no one will be able to pair up with a tarot. And as you know, there is a tendency, especially in the last three, four years, to use Oracle decks as, uh, you know, a deck that you would pair up with a tarot deck. So when there's a Oracle deck that really is so unique that you... You rack your brain and you can't really find a tarot deck that actually pairs up well with this one. It tends not to become popular because people, um, it requires that people to actually be using this deck on itself. And in many, many cases, there's a lot of knowledge about how to use decks like tarot decks and oracle decks together with tarot decks in a reading. But there is not a lot of knowledge, or at least there's not a lot of uh, let's say, presence on, um, um, let's say, social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube about Oracle readers. And I mean purely and just Oracle readers. You will find a gazillion people reading tarot and only tarot. You will find the majority of the tarot community, community using Oracle together with tarot, but you won't find a lot of people using just oracle decks. And when there is something like this kind of aesthetics, it's difficult to find a tarot deck that pairs up really well, although I think I found it, because I think that the uh, uh, Cozy Witch tarot actually pairs up really well with this deck. Let me just show you briefly. So this is the Cozy Witch uh, tarot deck, and I'm just going to show you quickly what I mean, because I believe that these two actually pair up quite well together. And it's a discovery that I'm very proud of because 
I've been racking my brain trying to find a deck that would pair up well with the Magical Spirit. I think that somehow also the um, uh, the Gold Lyre and the uh, Gentle Tarot will pair up well with this, but the one that really feels like it's coming home is the Cozy Witch. And the fact that these two pair up really well together also means that, for example, I appreciate the Cozy Witch even more. Because let me tell you, the Cozy Witch was a very difficult buy for me, not because of the price, because it's very affordable. I even got it on a sale, so it was super cheap. Um, but it was a difficult one because 99% uh, of characters are very young, apart from one. I think this is the only person, or maybe one or two, that is not super young. And I could definitely be these people's mum. I could be their mum. Uh, definitely be, you know, this person's mum. And so, uh, but, but I'm not looking for a mother kind of deck. I'm not looking uh, for, for that kind of energy. And so, um, especially because it's a whole tarot deck. And so I, I really thought to myself, do I really want this deck? Am I going to use it? Am I going to find like it actually resonates with me or not? And I find that actually does. And one of the reasons why I'm confident in using it is because I actually do pair it up with the Magical Spirit Oracle and it works really well. As you can see, there's a lot you can tell about these two decks together. There's directionality to be read. But also, for example, there's the fact that there is a whole conversation, okay, going on between the cards. So you see this one and, and um, humor me for a couple of seconds. So in this card, we've got the Red Royals, Overcoming Obstacles, Finding Joy, Carefree. But the card itself, if we ignore the bottom part, it says, don't worry, darling, you'll find your way. Okay, and it's between the Eight of Pentacles and the King of Swords. And it really literally feels like the King of Swords is telling to the person on the Eight of Pentacles, don't worry, darling, you'll find a way. Because the Eight of Pentacles is like, oh my God, I have to work, I have to work, I have to work, I have to double down on what I'm doing. I'm not there yet. Uh, I'm on the right track, but I really, I have so much, you know, to do. And then the King of Swords, because it's the expert, is the one that actually has achieved that kind of self-confidence, is actually communicating through the Oracle to the person on the Eight of Pentacles. And I can assure you that you can actually do that, perhaps not with all of the cards, but with a, a lot of these cards. And it's a really beautiful conversation that you have, and it makes me always very happy. So, going back though to the Magical Spirit Oracle and the reason why I feel that this deck is one of my Zen decks is because of the messages in the cards. You don't need it all figured out. Don't you feel like taking a deep breath now, like just being relieved? Call your energy back to you. You can let go now, surrender to what is. Isn't that the kind of thing you want to read about when it is indeed 3 a.m. and you're waking up because you're anxious about something? And we all know that. We all know that we cannot necessarily let go. We, at the end of the day, it's just a moment in which we're just recuperating the energy that we lost. We recuperate that kind of sense of balance and we ground ourselves and then we have to face whatever it is that we're facing. Um, you know, but we renew the energy and it won't feel the same. So it, it's a really, it's one of those decks that you can use uh, without a tarot because it has everything, it's complete. It's got pretty much everything that it needs. Oh, I don't break that easy, not anymore. Instead, I use things as fuel. That I feel like, you know, this is a such a beautiful message together with the alchemist as the title of this card, empowerment, pain, sorceress. Maybe the keywords, I don't, I really don't like the empowerment keyword because I feel like it's been thrown left and right lately. Everything seems to be empowering. No, some things are not empowering, unfortunately. <laughs> it's, it's a way you react to things that can be empowering, but then it's not things that are empowering. But I don't break that easy, not anymore. So I really like this attitude, the, the fact that it tells you, on the one hand, it tells you to be stronger, but on the other hand, it also tells you that it's okay, I don't know what I'm doing either. So it's a deck that tells you that it's okay to be you. To be you in whatever form or shape that you is. And that's a Zen deck for me. 
So that was it for today. These are my Zen decks, but I will be interested to know if you have a Zen deck or even more than one. Let me know in the comments below. I'm always uh, open to trying new things. For now, have a great day.